It has been just over a year since I purchased my 2008 Audi R8 and it's hard to believe it's been that long and in the last 12 months we've done a lot. I've put well over 3,000 miles on the car. We have done car cruises. We've made car content. <laughs> and we have wrapped the car ourselves, which was a huge process, and if you're interested, you can check out below our videos on that, but it's been a great deal of fun. However, I thought I would make a video and round up all of my thoughts on owning the car. For anybody out there that might be interested in purchasing one or just wanna know what it's like to actually own an R8. It's been a fantastic car overall, but I wanted to go a little more in depth on my thoughts after one year of ownership. So let's first start with the looks, the exterior of the car, and I absolutely love it. People are shocked when they come up to find out that it is 10 years old. It has aged phenomenally well. I remember when I first saw the car, I was obsessed with it. I knew it was something that I wanted to own if I ever had the opportunity. And still today, it puts a huge smile on my face. I still just love the car. Now when I bought it, it came from the factory black with the carbon side blades, and it looked really good, but it was a bit muted for how incredible, how exotic the car is overall. So of course, we added this wrap, and it has changed everything immensely. I'm so happy with it, and we get tons and tons of great feedback on the wrap. Now, I would like to change the color of the wheels. We'd like to maybe powder coat them some sort of black, but honestly, the car still just now looks fantastic. And I just, when I walk in the garage again, it just puts a huge smile on my face. A few things that I would like to add eventually is possibly a carbon fiber front splitter as well as side skirts that could be carbon fiber. It'd give it a more kind of aero look, but overall, again, everything is fantastic on the car and it's going to continue to age so well. The profile, just the side lines of the car as well as how low the car sits, it just looks like something so different in traffic. The rear of the car, again, everything. I'm just so, so happy with it. One thing I will note is that the new generation of R8s do look quite a bit different and they lost the large side blade. And I really, really love this carbon side blade. It sets it apart. It looks so good on the car. And it's one of the things I get more comments about than anything else. But again, overall, fantastic job on the exterior of the car and it just looks so good. So happy in my opinion. The second thing that I want to talk about is the drivetrain. Audi obviously has their Quattro system, which is their all-wheel drive drivetrain, and it is incredible. Its ability to grip and handle is beyond anything that really I have experienced before. I had a 2007 Chevrolet Corvette before that, and obviously it being rear-wheel drive, all I knew was traction loss. All the time, I would lose traction, and sometimes that is fun, but if you're taking a corner as hard as you possibly can. You want something that's going to grip and the Quattro system is absolutely capable of doing so. It has the ability to actually send 80% of the power to the real wheels. So I can feel like I'm getting that kind of rear wheel drive push off of the line. But as soon as I start to slip, if I'm taking a hard corner, it will start to put more power towards the front wheels to help straighten me out and just do a great job at adding grip. It really is incredible what they can do. I have only once lost traction and it was just for a bit of time. As soon as I started to feel it, I kept giving it gas, but the car automatically kind of pulled itself together and pulled me out. And it just did a fantastic job. I do have some pretty large rear tires as far as width size, and honestly, that helps a ton. But with 420 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque, the car is really not outmatched in performance terms. It really settles with the car very nicely, and I'm so happy with the outcome of the car's ability. So, for the third thing that I wanted to talk about, we're actually going to jump into the interior of my. Audi R8. So let's talk about the interior on my Audi R8. And I will say overall, I'm really happy with it. So let's start with also the things that I really like about the car. And one of the first things that I love about the car is all of the leather. The individual that actually purchased this before me was the original owner and he spec'd the car out and he did the upgraded leather package and it did wonders for the car. 
10 years later and this car still has an incredibly rich leather smell. I love it. Every time I get in the car, I get comments all the time, but when I get in the car, it smells nice, refined. It just smells almost like a new rich car and I love that. I love that aspect every single time. The build quality of the seats as well with that leather are incredible. They have very good bolstering so they hold you in very nicely if you're kind of driving a little bit more spiritedly. And then you have of course all of your leather up here. In addition to the leather, you have a lot of metal pieces. You have kind of your, your shifter up here, some of these knobs, as well as my door handles and around the kind of speaker wells has a nice little metal strip around here. I have a little quattro plaque, just a lot of nice little pieces. My gauge cluster also looks really nice. My little gauges up here, it's something that has really done well over time. It's kind of, again, aged very nicely and the build quality is astounding. One of my favorite things about the car is seeing the R8 logo there. As you're driving along, it reminds you of the incredible car that you're driving, how special the car is that you're driving. And so the overall feel in here is pretty nice. I even have these kind of rubber slash metal brake and gas pedals down here that feel just superb. They're not something that is, is gonna break down over time. They just look very, very classy with the car. But I do have a few gripes with the interior. One of the first being my navigation screen. Now this car is 10 years old, but I feel like 10 years ago, this still was an unintuitive, kind of clunky designed navigation. It just does not work very well. Again, just very slow. And now it has not aged well. It's just old and does not respond well, just slow overall. It makes for kind of a frustrating use. And honestly, while it does have Bluetooth connectivity, it's only for taking calls. You can you know, make and take calls through it, but honestly, it just sucks because I can't even play music through it. I love being able to play music and changing out the navigation screen is not easy at all. A lot of my older subscribers are aware that I actually in my C6 Corvette did an installation myself on a brand new Kenwood that was incredible. It gave me Apple Play, gave me navigation, it gave me everything that I needed in my Corvette. And this, it's kind of a no-go. It's not something that I'm gonna be able to do because it's so expensive. I do just enjoy driving the car, so that's okay, but I do wish I could play music. I wish even an aux cord uh, connection would have been welcomed in the car. Another small thing that really drives me nuts is the paddles. Now, a lot of people run into this issue, but for a $130,000 car at base, they're just kind of these plastic paddles that don't give you any nice feedback. Back. They have a little click to them, but a lot of people run into this issue. And a lot of cars have come a long way over time, but honestly, Audi could have done much better. And while I like using my shifters because they make me kind of a quicker, better driver, they just overall just they don't give you that feedback that you would like out of a really nice paddle. As I said, I really am overall very happy with the interior. I get lots of comments on it and I love this kind of cockpit feel. It really hugs you in really nicely and it is a small car and it still has a decent amount of room inside. I've got a little space area back here and of course my frunk's got a little bit but for kind of an exotic mid-engine vehicle, it definitely can be used for kind of small road trips away. So I do love love being and sitting and driving in this car. So while we're still inside my Audi R8, let's talk about the fourth thing on my R8, and that is the R-Tronic transmission. And it's my biggest gripe on the whole car. This is an automated manual transmission, which means it does have a clutch, it's a manual transmission, but everything is automated by computer. If I leave it in automatic, it will make the shifts for me. But honestly, almost nobody ever leaves this car in automatic because the computer system in it is so poor. So everybody puts it in manual and then either uses the up down shifter or uses their paddles. It makes for a much better experience. But overall, it's still a very old, unrefined clunky system that obviously could be improved immensely and they actually have. The newer S-Tronics, which is the dual clutch systems on this, are immensely better. They're much more like what the Huracan has and they do a much better job of making fast shifts. This clunkiness really can be felt. Now a lot of people will say that it kind of makes the R8 feel raw, which can be fun. If I shift at 7,000 RPMs or 7,500 RPMs, it really kicks 
punch you in the butt. You can feel it all throughout the car. And that's fine, it's not hard on the vehicle, but it just is slow. It's trying to grab that next gear and it's trying to dump all of that extra gas as you're giving it, grabbing the next gear and then going. And that's kind of that kick that you get that's very violent. Some people, again, love that, but for as refined as this car is, I think it could be better. And I just hate overall how slow it can be. In traffic, it's very terrible. At low speeds, it's terrible. It does not like to be driven lightly. The transmission is designed for hard track use. And honestly, for everyday drivability, it is probably the biggest issue with the car overall. Now, with that being said, there are software updates that you can make to kind of refine that. I have not done it, but people have said they've gotten a little bit more viability out of the clutch when when they do these little software updates from different companies. It's not actually from Audi, they're from other companies. And so some people have had better luck with that. Me overall, I have gotten better by realizing that I need to let off the gas as I make the shift just a little bit. There's a perfect point. You don't drop all the way off of the gas, you just come off the gas just a bit as you make the shift point and it makes the shifts a little bit quicker. The other thing you can do is always leave it in sport mode. That makes the shifts tighten up a bit more and with that that added kind of relief of the gas as you make a shift, it's a little bit better, but it's a lot of work for a technically automatic vehicle. So for my fifth and final point that I wanna talk about on the car is the performance slash exhaust note. Now the car does have 420 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, which may not seem like a lot, but coupled with the all-wheel drive system, this car is not a slouch at all. I've been on many cruises with much higher horsepower vehicles and it never seems like I'm just completely getting blown away. Now, I am slower than a 488 or a 720S by quite a bit, but on roads, it seems just fine. I seem to be able to keep up just fine with these cars, and I never get any comments that I'm just getting blown away, and I absolutely loved that aspect of the car. The performance is just fine at the price point that you're getting. Now, I would say that the V10 would give you a little bit more of an edge, and I would have liked to get that, but starting out the V8, is just fine. For most people that are looking at this, it may be their first exotic car that they're looking to buy, and this is a great choice. The forged pistons in the V8 are great, and that high rev limiter rate of over 7,500 RPM is really nice. You can pretty much hit this car as hard as you want constantly, and you're never gonna have any engine issues. But that does bring me on to the exhaust note of the car, and it's one of the other things in addition to the automated manual, the R-Tronic, that really kind of is lackluster in this car. The exhaust on it is just really, really quiet for a car like this. That V8 engine note could be so much louder with a better exhaust, and it's something I've talked about in my other videos upgrading. While we did the wrap, we were thinking to take off the whole back and go ahead and do it, but we have not been able to find the exact exhaust that we want. I've been really, really picky on my exhaust, and so I've done a lot of research, and I think we found one that we would like to use, but I've been waiting because I want to make sure I make the right choice, because changing an exhaust on this is no small deal. You have to take the whole rear bumper off. Instead of like on my Corvette where you throw it up on a lift, bolt it down, bolt it up, this could be eight, 10, 15 hours of work depending on how long it takes to get everything pulled off. And it's very expensive if you have someone do it. Labor for it is just over $2,000. So it's something that I have to actually consider quite deeply before I actually make a decision. So for now, I'm sticking with stock, but it is something to note that it will be much, much better of a vehicle with that new exhaust note for a new exhaust added. So I'm sure as you can tell, for the most part, I absolutely love my Audi R8. It has been a dream car for so many years and there's almost no aspect of it that would turn me off from the car. Even with its transmission and its quieter exhaust note, overall the car is fantastic. It just always, always puts a smile on my face, which guys, is so important. When you're looking at buying a car, don't think about the car that makes other people excited. What makes you excited. You're the one that's purchasing it. You're the one that's paying for it and working so hard to attain it. So make sure it's what you want. And yes, while there is a lot of things that I'd like to see, a better dash, a better horsepower output, it overall 
really lacks almost nothing for my needs. So while there's a few things that I would like to see on the car, it really for the most part lacks nothing that I truly need out of the car. But thank you so much for joining me on today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please help support our channel, subscribe, also, thumbs up this video if you found it informative. If you do have any questions on my Audi R8 or just Audi R8s in general, as far as ownership, drop them in the comments below. We would absolutely love to answer any questions that you might have. As always, you take care. We'll see you next video.